Welcome back to Boring Reviews. Boring Land. Oh, just kidding. On. Blasphemer. Oh, Hello, my. Boring Review Nation. <laughs> we know all things. All right, welcome back to Boring Reviews. Nick here. Gabe. Guy Tone Day. Ooh, he's got the WrestleMania shirt on. I love it. Shawn Michaels, Stone Cold. If I don't, um, if I remember correctly, you had a little bit of Mike Tyson as a special guest referee in that match right there. Ooh. That was a classic right there. But we are here for another Footy Friday, and we got Gabe here to help us out. Gabe the Ruckman, anyone? No? <laughs> Gabe the Umpire Hater. You're going to love the video I got for you today, my oh, friend. Yes. This is a video requested by Darshan once again. He is a great viewer, great friend of the channel. And he says, this one's especially for Gabe. This is about umpires, our umpires, and the MRO ruining our game. MRO stands for Match Review Officer. It says right here, the match review officer will assess all reports and referrals lodged in respect of potential reportable offenses. A notice report may be lodged by an officiating umpire for the relevant match. So I don't think that's someone in charge of reviews, instant replays. Sounds like that's someone who's in charge of, you know, the gameplay, fair play, all that kind of nonsense if someone gets out of control. You know, before even watching this video, are umpires ruining the game? Absolutely. Absolutely, they're ruining. Doesn't the matter game. what the game is. Doesn't matter what the game is, bro. Listen, they could be they they could be officiating chess, bro. You know, the, and, and, and you know they'll be breathing over a kid's neck like seven seconds. You know, like back up, back up. Wow, bro. Here's the thing: umpires should not be seen, bro. Yet, find me a sport where they're not. Okay, umpires. You know when <laughs> an umpire that camouflage on? Listen, they should not be a part of the game outside of doing their job, and officiating. However, when umpires become a part of the game, when you know an umpire by a first name, that's a problem, all right? All right, <laughs> Joe West, player. Joe West, you heathen. He's probably the worst. Uh, I'm telling you, a Cowboy Joe West is the worst. Or is it Angel Hernandez? Angel Hernandez is also horrible. Form? These are two of the worst baseball umpires of all time. And people know them by first name. They are synonymous with bad calls in America. Bad calls, all right? No, you should not be a part of the game, all right? Sit there in your blue shirt or your white shirt or your zebra shirt. That's for the NFL officials. And don't be a part of the game. They're hot, bro. It's they want fame. And you know what really, you know, chaps my chapstick? As they say, chaps my chapstick? Is that chaps that my chapstick? I think you just made that up. You know what does, Nick? The fact that most of these umpires never played on a pro level, never even played like at a collegiate level, okay? So wait, you're going to tell me about the game when your contribution to the game has been spectating? Get out of here. Oh, dude, I hate him with a passion. I hate him with a passion. You got me fired up. Oh, you got me fired up. <laughs> so I'm I'm desperate to find out because Gabe hates himself, some uh, umpires of any kind of sport. I got to find out, Gabe. What is the uh, what is the replacement for umpires? What is the other system to officiate these games if you don't have umpires? What is the alternate situation? Listen, here's what you do. Okay, okay. you go to technology. You have the umpires in there, but oh, you, you take robots? away, bro. I'll guess what? Robots are unbiased. You're not gonna have robots throwing NBA games and giving 39, 39 foul shots. To the uh to your Los Angeles Robots? Lakers, to your Los Angeles Lakers when they absolutely screwed the Sacramento Kings. All right, you're not gonna get that, Nick. You're not. That all was right? like 18 years ago. I don't care. But it was 30 years ago. It years happened. Ago. All right, bro. Again, umpires are fallible. A by mistake, B by corruption, oh, yeah, or C by incompetence. A lot of times it's incompetence. All right, bro. Computers. <laughs> I don't think you're being realistic. Thing. Listen, you know what I would I, I would like, honestly? Fine, make a mistake. I'll take the mistakes. It happens, okay? But don't try to be a part of the game. Tell me you watch Angel Hernandez or Cabo. I've seen Joe West toss a player for looking at him. For looking at him. Like, you're out of here. It's like they're bored. 
I want to get on Sports Center with his stupid mustache. That I would agree with. No, no. I don't think, I don't think Joe West game. has a mustache. You're not a part of the game. You know what I'm saying, bro? It just drives me crazy. You're not a part of the game. You're officiating the game. Don't try to be – you don't see the water boy running out there on the field. Like, hold on, let me get in the shot, ESPN, and – let me spray the water in Kobe's butt. No, they don't do that. It's like, bro, I hate them with a passion. You have no idea. You have no idea. <laughs> I think those watching this video have a small idea. Bro, so we're gonna. Ch- it's so bad. Let me go off on a rail. High school umpire, oh. state championship. My son is playing third base. Okay. Oh, we're of course, up. your son's involved. Now we're you're up, fired up. Actually, no. We're up five. Uh, what was it? Five four at the time. We're actually up five one or five two. And this umpire kept squeezing the pitcher. The parents are going nuts, Nick. I promise you. They, they actually filed an official complaint because the the coaches were because we've got it on tape. Three straight pitches down the pipe, and the umpire would not even look. He'd look at the crowd. And finally, the other idiot on the, the – I, I wouldn't even say that. You know, the, the player, all he had to do was keep taking – he was not calling strikes. All he had to do was keep telling, taking balls. The kid throws a fat pitch right down the middle of the plate, pops it straight up in the air, pitcher catches it, which catches it, and we win the state championship. Afterward, the umpire – And you're still complaining. <laughs> because he's a heathen. And we got it on tape that you were blowing calls all game, and you let three pitches go right down the plate. And it was like to show up the parents and look at us like, I'm in charge out here. No, you're not! All right? You're the scum of the earth, bro. I hate oh all gosh. umpires. Gosh, bro. On tape, it's an official complaint lobbied against this umpire. He will never, ever umpire another Sierra Vista. And I'm so glad that it was, since it was a state championship game that we got it on crowd. Not just the fact that he wasn't calling strike, that he was looking at the crowd. Why is he looking at the crowd, Nick? Why Maybe is he looking at the crowd? Stands and she has bad health. He wants to get make sure she's doing here. okay. What wife? What wife? No one could love him. Oh no one could love him. <laughs> because he can't call a strike. Listen, I- I'm going to have to, you know, call you out right now. There is no way I am your president of your Sinister Six because you don't ever go off the way you do about umpires. I know they're your president. I know I'm like an honorary title holder that you give me as like a- an official title to make me feel better about myself. But there's no way. You hate me more or hate me less than well, the umpires. Here's the thing. There's too many umpires to hate. Okay. I hate um- umpires as an institution. I hate them as a profession. There's too many of them to name. So they're on the city. Well, you state, always mention but... the same two. <laughs> <laughs> All, right. All right. Are you so, able well, to get some more? I, listen, I stopped naming he who shall remain nameless. I'm just saying because I was so I could not walk I could not safely walk through the, the through the streets of Jamaica if I said his name again. Buckner. Buckner. All right. Buckner. <laughs> the Buckner. Oh, sorry. I had a little something in my throat. Okay. <laughs> For those AFL fans, I promise we will get to the reaction right now. We're gonna go ahead and check this out. We're gonna little learn a little more about the MRO. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And we'll start this video off in three. Two, one. Walker puts them up by one. There's 40 precious seconds to say. Got fired up. And Petrarca, the star, gets it. They pick it. Almost. Spargo, Murray. He goes to the line. What's the call? What's the call? Oh! Do you hear that collective? Oh! I don't think you can handball it towards the goal. Well, it was a non-call the on non-call. the weekend, and the <laughs> AFL conceded tonight. It was the wrong call, but the Crows got a lot right, as did two Ooh, of the Crows. All right, and the Lions to breathe life and unpredictability into this season. Hello, welcome along to uh, on the couch, Gary, Nick, and Brownie. It was the it was the round of footy we absolutely needed. I think there was this general view this time last week that the season was almost, uh, not over, but the eight was already determined. In the space of uh, two days, she's back on, and uh, what a round it was. Late and barracking. 
Oh, you know, the sirens in the background. Very good, Gary. You did well. <laughs> did well. Anything, Jared, spoken, <laughs> when, when you said Cosy should have been dropped <laughs> for dropping that mark, I thought you went a little bit too far. Pushing yeah. the back to Cosy. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, that was a contentious one. That was a great game of footy. Yeah, yeah. And, I, and I, um, I back you up on what you're saying. It was a really good round of footy. The, the competition squeezed up again, which yeah. was great, just at a time when you thought it was going out the other way. And, and that one, yeah... The deliberate became the talking point. I don't know why. Yeah. It, it was the wrong decision and it was rubber stamped today by the AFL. Um, there were all sorts of conspiracies and oh, the, there was a fingertip on it from Spargo and yeah. all this sort of nonsense. The, his intention was to get it across and he got yeah. away with it, the young fella. He probably, like all, we all would have been that, do I go through for a point, therefore it's a draw, I try and just... Put Let it us know in the comments section what the big uproar is. Such as life. Can, can, can you score a goal with a handball? A I don't point, think you though, can. That's happened too many times this season. Yeah. Where, where contentious decisions late have decided the game for the wrong reason. Yeah, but not not on out of bounds. Like we've all yeah. sat here and done deliberate out of bounds yeah. and gone have a look. You know, how, how, is it? so we sort of accept it. And then when it comes down to the the easiest one of recent times to pay, they don't pay it. It shows human nature, though, guys. We're, we're, it doesn't matter what the decision. We saw the Geelong game was a yeah. howler. Geelong Brisbane, I think, it was round two or round three. We're just. You know, 100 out of 100, yeah. they get paid. And that yeah. one, 100 out of 100, yeah. they get paid. But the human element of it, under pressure, you know, the money. There you go, game. game. And they can't bring themselves to blow the whistle. We so. saw the statement Such from the NFL. Such a cheap yeah. excuse. Do you think that helps? <laughs> uh, to clarify. Yeah. Do uh, you think they should do that, given it's just one of a couple of hundred decisions? Uh, they're probably, probably those ones, because yeah. there's so much around. I'm not sure about it needs to be every week, but mm. I, I think the real big controversial ones, you need to give some clarity on it. And unfortunately, the umpires have let themselves down in these situations. Yep. These three cases this year where um, decisions should have been paid late, they've yep. got to be better than that. Yeah. I think they've umpired well this year, yep. but they need to be better than that. They need to compose themselves in the pressure situation, like a player has to do, like a Tex Walk had to do late in the game, and kick a goal from 45. It's the same pressure. Just well, put just a stop to it, Jared. That's why they do it. Yeah, because yeah, I can, that's it. it. I can accept that. We're not that. talking about tomorrow. We're moving on, and away yeah. you go. Roy, well, you're pretty upset this morning uh, about the match review panel. Yeah, well, I think to start with, we've got to we've got to acknowledge that everything the AFL has done, all the levers that the AFL have, has pulled to protect the head, were absolutely necessary, and they've they've they, they should be applauded mm. for that. But right the way through that process, there have still been people that have had an issue with it and have said, "Oh, the, the game's stuffed, the game's terrible, the game's gone soft," mm. and I don't think they've ever had a point until today. And wow. all the findings came down, particularly the, the Holman yep. finding where he got suspended for two weeks. You can argue the Ploughman one. Oh, I think Ploughman's a good chance of getting off that. But all those people that have had an issue with the game becoming <coughs> soft, they had a point today. Let's have a look at them. Let's go through them then and, and, and give our assessment. I think we're all in a you know, violent agreement about yep. the Nick Holman. I mean, the situation is he's chasing down from behind. He's done the right thing. He's refused to concede. He's laid the tackle. There's no secondary movement. His forward momentum takes him to the ground. And really unfortunate for Mitch Duncan as he hits his head. Yeah, I mm. think it's an unfortunate outcome. He got two weeks for that? Probably, uh, Seriously. Yeah. I thought this yeah, was rugby. I but, uh, nevertheless, uh, this is AFL. This but I don't, think uh, too I don't know the rules well enough. I, I thought you could tackle in AFL. Maybe, maybe you can't if, they have, if they're going for the kick. I don't know. It's not a violent action. It's no double action. I think he gets off. But how do we get there then? Is it more of a steep penalty because the guy hurt himself? I don't know where Michael Christian and I assume Steve Hocking are coming with that particular one, but uh, I, I think I think that's clear. I think there's more contention in the Lockie Plowman. Just, just before we move on that, so we need to be told then, as a you know, us as commentators and then the public as well, as to why. Mm. So if, if it does get overturned, which we're all anticipating mm. it does, yeah. then I would like to hear from Steve to say, well, this is yeah. this is why we gave it the two weeks, mm. so we can get an understanding of what. Well, it almost at. seems as if now, if that gets suspended, uh, that action gets suspended, that any contact with the head on the ground yeah. in a tackle is a suspendable action. So mm. much like the but bar, you can't yeah, control that. Contact to the head, so the tackling play is culpable. That's what. Yeah, we need yeah. a lot of great area. I think that's against the spirit of the game. I think that's taking too far. And I absolutely agree with you, Rui. You made a good yeah. point. I think we need to accept that football accidents will yeah. still happen. You can put all of the measures in place, but accidents will still happen, and that 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 is a genuine accident. To put a full stop on it, uh, let's hear from the Suns coach in Stuart Dew tonight on 360. You know, it's a football action, but, you know, we'll, we'll go through that process tomorrow night. But I, I guess we're, we're confident, given um, whether you look at it in fast or slow motion, that he, he did everything possible 
you know, in duty of care and to execute a, a tackle within the laws of the game. And I don't think there's too many people uh, that would disagree with Stuart Dew there, so we expect that will be uh, sorted out. And if it's not sorted out, then we have got a problem. The Lockie Plowman one, I think, is of more interest because it's more divisive. Um, I personally think he's guilty. I think he elected to bump. Uh, he should have rotated uh, his right shoulder to, to spoil, rotated his left shoulder to protect Ooh. himself and to, to yeah, take out. He looked like he was leaving with his shoulder, that's for sure. This is an accident. I've got no doubt about that. That's a big uh, hit. I think the rule's pretty clear on this one. So you've got to work out whether he could have avoided the accident and then Jeez. whether he was going to bump or spoil. That's the only two things. That hurts both of them. Yeah. If you're in the spoiling camp, then... Oh, that guy's on. out. That's another one of these accidents. I'm not. I think he... Just from looking at that, I don't think he was... His sole purpose was to spoil there, so... Yeah, I think, I think it, it was up. until about two steps to mm. go. Yeah. You're, you're allowed yeah. to take the body when you spoil, though. But if you hit the head, you've got to take the consequence. But you're, but yeah, well, no, that's right. But your, your assessment is he yeah. was spoiling. Yeah. Mine is, I don't think he was. I thought he would have had the arm far further out. But the, uh, that's good. Go to the tribe. Well, you can look at it as the action, can't you, guys? And if you are spoiling, you've got your fist. Yeah, oh, that's right. And think. unfortunately for him, I think he's 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 probably panicked late and thought, hang on, his fist was his fist was cocked. Yeah, but it was it was cocked there. Yeah, look at look, look at it cocked into his chest. So. Um, he covers up at yeah, the end. He covers up yeah, at the end. he definitely like, looks oh, like he's going for it. Accident, but at the end of the day, if you don't put the football action out there on the spoiling action, right. you become culpable for the head injury. I'm not. I, I'm, by the way, I'm not. I, I think that's that's just one of those split second ones yeah. where yeah. if he goes, he just in the end covering up. He yeah. paid the price. I don't think he lined him up from 20 metres. No, no so I'm going to clean him up. No. What about Kyle Hardigan? I think he's lucky to get just the three weeks. Yeah, three to four. He's lucky he's not getting five. Yeah. Three and to four is, weeks. That's an elbow to the head behind the play. Yeah, amazing. Yeah. So that's three weeks, thank you, lucky stars. And the probably, man, uh, I thought Harry might have reacted uh, more so if he had to actually known what had happened. But Harry was obviously blindsided by it. So I'd be looking after yeah. the little fellow that's putting it down his throat every week. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, no, that's a good point. Because yeah. you, you, you do want your big man to, yeah. to remonstrate. He wouldn't you have, have no to go idea nuts. what was going on. That, but no. that's right. But yeah. it, I, I think Harry would be watching that and probably... He, he would be embarrassed by how it looks yeah, yeah, yeah. because it looks like he didn't stand up for his team. And I, I genuinely don't think he saw it. But, yeah, he's lucky to get three yeah, That's right. right. That's absolute rubbish. All right. So I want to talk about the uh, – I don't understand the rule with the first thing that they were talking about. It seems like he was hitting out of bounds on purpose to get it away from the goal and so that they could, uh, you know, reset that. I don't think you can do that unless they're saying, oh, I was trying to and I lost control of it and just happened to go there. I think that's what's going on there. Let us know in the comment section below. I want to know your thoughts on that last one where the guy looked like he was leading with his shoulder because he's going full speed at this guy. I want to know what is his reasoning for going full speed. His hands aren't out like he's going to try to get that mark. He's going full speed, and they said spoil it. I'm assuming they mean that he was trying to spoil the mark and prevent it from happening. And he does. He kind of clinches up with his arms and he goes in. Now, he could be bracing for impact to protect himself instead of just going full on like this and getting really, really hurt. But it seems to me that he was definitely trying to spoil it and he was doing everything he could to try to prevent that mark from happening. And it's like the NFL. If you tackle in a way to wear helmet to helmet or shoulder to helmet, you have a head injury, you're more likely, just from how it looks and what happens, to get a fine and get in trouble just because of the result as opposed to the the form or the the intent going in. Right. So the 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 the, the what the play you're talking about, right? And I'm assuming when they set out with the fist cocked, spoiling is like a guy's gonna go make a mark, right? And you're punching it out of his hand so that he can't you know make the catch. So to me, that mm -hmm. I, that's what I think the play is. With that being said, bro. That's your 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 your. It's like when you go make a tackle and you know there's going to be the possibility for that in the NFL head to head. Then that's on you because you know that they're not taking that anymore, and that's a possibility. So that play, I can see why there's more uh, of a shade of gray area. While the first play, it's like, look, if the if I tackle the guy and do everything I'm supposed to do, and the guy happens head happen to hit the ground, mm -hmm. that's not my fault. You know what I mean? That's just it's an accident. I didn't intentionally mean to do that. You need me two weeks for that. Now, what I'm more surprised is that AFL. Thank you for correcting me, not rugby, but the sport as a whole 
they're moving away from when we started watching it. And, and I know you watch it more than I do, but we would see all the fights and all the huge collision or whatever. It's just like the NFL now, bro. They're going away from that because the amount of damage these guys do with the concussions and, you know, career ending injuries just lawsuits, keep piling up. Machine, lawsuits, yep. exactly. It's a bet. So we can see that they're trying to clean up the game. So for that, listen. I will never uh, 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 fault the league for that. And other than that first one where it was like, look, he really didn't intend to do it. I have no problem with the other two uh, uh, um, calls, okay, with the other two calls and the other two penalties as far as how many days they get. In the NFL, it's like, yeah, you got to uh, give me a check. You know what I'm saying? Right. You got to do a lot to get, to get, you know, to get suspended for a game. But give me a check. It hits you in the pocket. Now, Going back to the umpire call, in hockey, just this year, I remember posting something earlier this year about the blown calls that they were in a game, and hockey admitted, oh, yeah, that was the wrong call. Same thing has happened in football. Same thing has happened in baseball. NBA admitted, yeah, we had an issue. We had it cleaning up, the whole Tim Donahue thing, right? Ask me, Nick, outside of Tim Donahue, who went to jail because the FBI figured it out, not the NBA, that's what 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 penalty? What penalty do these guys face? None, none. Oh, he can't get a playoff game. He still got to check more than both of our us make just to let you know. And we're both professionals with master's degrees. Listen, you're getting paid to do a job, and I love that they said that. You're not out. You're out here doing a job, mate. You got to do better. Okay, you got to do better. And, and and it's it's not you you you. It's not you and I or a, a casual observer who's out there doing the job. If you're a trained professional and this is what you're doing, you got to be better than making those kind of calls. And that was a, an egregious call, obviously. You know what I mean? Like, like I don't, what is a justification? I never, maybe it's just my, my cynicalness, Nick, but whenever I see a call that's egregious, I think that guy's on the take. The, 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 that guy's on the take. He's throwing the game. He's indebted to the wrong people, whatever, because you we all know the old adage, where there's smoke, there's fire. And I don't think there's been one game, not one, from cricket to the NBA to the NFL to Major League Baseball that has not gone with a cheating scandal that inv involves match fixing. Name one sport. You know what I'm saying? Well, there's there's not a sport either that's gone without a scandal between players too, and you can't just, I'll get rid of all the players. You got to have players. I sympathize for the umpires and referees in sports to a certain degree because nobody likes them. I mean, you don't have anyone going to the game to root for them. No. They've got – no one wants to be the – you know, even as parents, you don't want to be the bad guy. Like, no one wants to have to make those tough calls that's going to crush the hearts of all these people. But you got to do a job. Now, on the other side, I see what you're saying because I watch a lot of baseball and I get so frustrated at the same bad call and same bad call. And in Major League Baseball, the umpires union is so strong that nothing can happen to these guys. They can't be touched regardless because they have all the power and MLB just, you know, bows down to them. So I understand that frustration. I wonder how it is with the AFL. Comment below. Let us know if the AFL's officials have been known to – you know, make these bad calls or the MRO or whatever that tackle you're talking about. I don't know the rules of AFL tackling. That was a very clean tackle in the NFL rules wrap around waist or below drag them down. I don't see any intent on trying to hurt the head. So the cool thing about this is that video, that little conversation was just recorded a week ago. So this is a very current thing happening in the AFL right now. That's not a several year old video. So it's pretty cool that it's a, it's a current situation, but with umpire, I don't, I don't envy their job, but at the same time, they're getting paid quite a bit of money to officiate a game, officiate a sport. They're on TV. They get the, uh, you know, the different benefits of being on the road and hotels and stuff. You got to do a better job. And I think Gabe's biggest frustration is just how pompous MLB umpires are because they really don't care. They'll throw you out if you say a swear word towards them um, and they didn't like it. And they'll tell you after the game, next time, don't do that to me. That's a little too crazy. But um, let us know what your guys' thoughts are with the umpires and officials. Cricket community loves the officials and respects them, and we appreciate that. But let us know if AFL is the same way. Gabe, any final thoughts on this matter? You know, ultimately, here's the thing. I don't think that 
every single umpire is corrupt, Nick. I really don't, okay? And some of them are just bad. They're bad at their job. But do I believe that there's corrupt umpires out there? Absolutely. Proofs in the pudding, it, you know, we've had the, the Tim Donahue uh, 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 situation. And he even said, you know, that's another thing that bothered me. He's like, listen, cut me a deal. There's 20 other guys doing this, not just in basketball. I know. Did you ever hear anything come up of that? No. Look it up online, guys. Read the story. They wouldn't cut this guy a deal because he was going to rat out other umpires that were on the take to, I think it was the Colombo family. I forget which mafia family it was. From a business but, standpoint, that would have just destroyed the sport even more. They didn't want to hear it. But yet they cut Sammy the Bull Gravano, who had bodied like 50 people, a, a, a deal. They cut him a deal and not Tim Donahue. That just tells you, you're right. They knew there was an issue and they didn't want to know because it would have, you know, destroyed the integrity of the sport. But how much longer do we have to continue to see these bad calls as fans and then say to ourselves, is this guy on the take? Is this one of the guys, Tim Donahue, he was talking about? Is this one of the guys that's in the pocket? And, you know, there's a mafia families all over. I don't care if you're in India or Australia. Organized crime, organized crime is wherever. Is this yeah. guy in somebody's well, You really pocket? can't compare sports to, you know, people dying, though. I mean, I can understand. I don't agree with it, but I can understand kind of deal with a mobster because that can hopefully prevent – um, other lives from being taken. No one's lives are being lost in sports. You know, I mean, it's unfortunate. Stop. Listen, stop. Don't, so don't, pay off that, don't pay off that gambling comparison. debt. Don't pay off that gambling debt. But what I'm saying is the fact that they would make a deal with. with yes, with, but that's with, to prevent future deaths from happening. Hopefully that's a little different. And, and would you not want to protect the integrity of the game and stop yes, more gambling it's just, from happening? It's a, little, it's a little different. That's that's all I'm going to say. You know what I mean? But, you know, if you're an umpire, don't take offense to this. And you know what? I challenge you. Ask yourself, why? <laughs> if you're an umpire, honestly, if you're watching this, no, sure. I challenge you, do the research, make first and foremost. Look up the cases I've talked about. See that I'm, there's some legitimacy to what I'm saying. And then ask yourself this question. How do we improve? All right. I think my uncle's a cop right now. And right now it's the worst time in the world to be a cop. All right. My uncles and cousins are all law enforcement F uh, officers. I talked about this. He's the head of the narcotics department in his precinct in New York City. There's nothing more. Nobody hates a bad cop more, Nick, than a good cop because they make everybody else look bad. You know what I'm saying? So I'm sure there's those umpires that really want to do their job well. And I'm like, man, you know, these guys are ruining it for the rest of us. How do you fix it? There's got to be a fix. You can't tell me that this is just something we got to deal with. Human beings are going to make mistakes. Think about yourself in your own life. You probably make mistakes every single day, right? I mean, you can't, you're not going to have that conversation with the wife every day and like, okay, Gabe, what are we going to do to fix this? This keeps <laughs> happening, right? I mean, they're, they're human beings, right? The atrocious ones, I'll grant that to you, but you know, there's going to be mistakes out there. Let us know what you think. Thank you so much for joining us for this Footy Friday. And until next time. That's six runs.